Thank you for watching our videos. We are going to talk about our recent papers calibrated surrogate losses for adversarial robust classification. I'm Ham, and this is a joint work with Clay and Masashi. First of all, as you know, even if modern machine learning models can achieve high prediction powers for the classification tasks, we can still fool the classifiers by adding a very small and perhaps imperceptible noises to the original data point. For instance, if we are given the image of panda and adding a small and imperceptible random noise to this panda image, then we can protect the data in the way that the given classifier will predict this as a given, which is a correct, completely different from the correct prediction panda. This kind of the process to add a noise to the original data point is called adversary attacks and can be a very big issue in the real world problems. For instance, uh, when we deploy the machine learning models to the autonomous driving cars. In order to pr protect our models from the, uh, this kind of the adversary attacks, we have to penalize the vulnerable, vulnerable predictions. First, in the usual classifications, if we are given these two points, because this, both of these two points lies in the correct side of the decision models, we don't have to penalize. So this can be formulated by zero loss. Zero loss only take care of the whether prediction uh, is correct or not. But on the other hand, in the robust classifications, these two points becoming a different. Because the first point, even if added worst case perturbations, then the prediction of the, uh, for this point would not change. So we don't have to penalize. But for the second case, if we add a worst case orthogonal prediction to this point, then this point would be brought to the different side of the decision numbers. So this is a vulnerable point, and we have penalized this point. This can be formulated by robust zero loss. Robust zero loss does not only penalize the wrong predictions, but also penalize in the case where this kind of the L2 ball will cross over the decision numbers. This is a different point from the original zero loss function. In case of the linear predictors, we can further simplify the form of the robust zero loss. Note that uh, the margin distance of the given data point x from the decision model can be written like theta transpose x, where theta is the normal vector of the decision model or parameter of the decision model. Then we can divide the case by the margin distance. If the margin distance theta transpose x is larger than gamma, then, even if the worst case perturbation cannot change the predictions, so we don't have to penalize. But if the theta transpose x is smaller than the gamma, then the worst case or orthogonal perturbations to the point would change the predictions. So we have to penalize even if the prediction for this point is correct. So the bus zero one loss in the case of linear predictors can be simplified by this kind of shape. So we only have to take care of whether the prediction margin is smaller or larger than the gamma. Because this is a very simple and convenient properties, we're going to analyze the case of linear predictions in the subsequent analysis. Here we can compare the formulation of the classifications. In the usual classifications, our final goal is to minimize zero risk, which is the expectation of a zero loss given like this one. So if the margin is lies in the positive side, so this is the correct predictions, and otherwise this is the wrong predictions. But in the case of robust classifications, then we have to minimize robust zero risk instead of the zero risk, which is the uh, expectation of a robust zero risk given here. The negative side is still the same, in the wrong predictions, but the positive side is slightly different. If the prediction is smaller than the gamma, then we, we have to consider this is a non robust predictions, even if this is the correct predictions. So we still have to penalize this region. So robust zero loss is a horizontally shifted version of the original zero loss. So we are going to consider these loss functions in our problem settings. But the problem here is both the zero loss and gamma robust zero loss is not easy to optimize because it is a discontinuous response and doesn't have uh, any gradient problems. 
So usual strategy is to use the salary loss functions, which is easy to optimize the zero, zero loss or target loss functions. So uh, we have, uh, usually use, for instance, logistic loss or hint loss, uh, which is usually convex or smooth um, counterpart of the zero loss functions. But the point is that even if this is uh, easy to optimize, but still different from the target loss or zero loss functions, our final learning criterion is still target loss functions. So we have to bridge the gap between target loss and the surrogate loss. Here, one important notion called the calibrated surrogate loss comes. We say the loss function, surrogate loss, is calibrated to the target loss or zone loss. If the surrogate risk, which is the expectation of the surrogate loss, uh, okay, minimizing surrogate risk implies the minimizing target risk. This is a desirable properties uh, we have to assume on the surrogate loss. So uh, one famous existing literature given by Bartlett et al. says that if the loss function is uh, convex and also has a negative gradient at the origin, then it's calibrated to zero loss functions. This is uh, why we use I usually use logistic loss or hinge loss in the binary. So our research question here is like this one. In the robust classification, we want to minimize robust zero loss instead of zero loss. So we want to ask what kind of surrogate loss function is calibrated to robust zero loss. Okay, in order to analyze the loss calibration properties, we're going to briefly talk about the calibration analysis, how to analyze the loss calibration property. And large proportion of the, this part is given by the earlier work given by English and Lord. Here are two important notions, definitions. First, conditional risk is a risk function at a single x. Here, this is a uh, surrogate risk of a surrogate loss function phi, and we decompose the expectation of the x and y given x. Here, this is the prediction, expectation of y given x, and if we write the class probability phi y given x by eta, and we write the prediction fx by alpha, then we can simplify the notation like this one. So this is a conditional risk. Uh, we fix the single x and consider the risk value. Then we can define the calibration. The loss function phi, surrogate loss, is called calibrated to the target loss function psi. If the minimizing surrogate excess conditional risk implies minimizing target excess conditional risk. This is our definition for the calibration. Then there is a one important main tool called the calibration function to be used. Calibration function is the infimum over the surrogate excess conditional risk, uh, such that the target excess conditional risk is larger than the Gibson. By following the definition of the calibration phase surrogate losses, then we can say uh, the calibration function is useful in two ways. First, it provides different conditions, if and only uh, if conditions for the calibrated surrogate losses. If a surrogate is calibrated, then the calibration function is always positive for all uh, input uh, positive epsilons. Second, it also provides the excess risk one. If the surrogate loss is calibrated, then the target exit theories can be bounded by the surrogate exit risk transformed by the monotonically increasing functions. So it implies minimizing surrogate exit risk implies target the minimization of the target exit risk. If we apply the calibration analysis to the binary classification where the target loss is zero on loss, so it is a recap of the Bartlett results. If a surrogate loss function is complex, then it's calibrated to zero on loss, if and only if it. Uh, the surrogate loss is differentiable at the origin, and it gives the negative gradient at the origin. So there are two famous examples, hinge loss and square loss, and you will easily to see both of them have a negative gradient at the origin. And the calibration function for the hinge loss gives the identity function, and square the shape for the square loss functions. Both of them has a positive values for all the positive sums. So we can also confirm they are calibrated with zero on so let's go back to the analysis of the robust classifications. Here, our goal is to minimize target loss, robust loss. 
So is there any kind of solid process? And surprisingly, we found that there doesn't exist uh, any convex carried surveillances. We're going to talk about the uh, intuition of this result. First, we call the definition of calibration functions. The constraint part of the calibration function means, uh, yeah, it's regarding to the robust one loss. Uh, we have to penalize predictions too close to the boundary. It means that yeah, it's depicted in these two areas. The areas too close to the boundaries should be robust. And second, the convex loss functions would keep the convex conditional risk here. So we plot the conditional risk in the three cases depending on the each uh, class probability. So you will easy to see that the minimizer of the convex conditional risk would give a positive regions if the class probability is positive, and if the class probability is negative, then it will give a negative minimizer for the conditional risk. But the problematic case is if the class probability is close to number two, then conditional risk will be minimized in the more robust regions because the conditional risk is convex. This causes the non existence of the convex calibrated solid losses. Then we have to analyze is there any alternative loss functions that is calibrated with robust analysis? Idea is to make the conditional risk is not minimized in non robust areas. So you can look at these figures. Even if the eta, the cost probability, is close to 1 over 2, we don't have, uh, we must not uh, make the minimizer rise in the non robust areas. So we have to make a conditional risk like this kind of a mountainous shape. Then we can consider the surrogate loss functions such that the conditional risk is quasi concave. We kept that quasi concave loss function, uh, quasi concave functions has a super level sets that's all, always convex. In other words, quasi concave function is a unimodal shape. One of the examples of the shift uh, quasi concave loss function is shifted ramp loss. The original ramp loss is truncated shape of the hinge loss, this one. If we push the, the original ramp loss towards the positive directions a little bit later, then we obtain a shifted ramp loss. And class conditional risk for the shifted ramp loss is like this one. So it gives the quasi concave shape and calibration function here becoming like this one. So we have a positive values for all positive epsilons. So this is a summary of the, our work. We analyze the adversary robust classification from the perspective of the loss function. In this case, under the restriction to the linear predictors, uh, the robust classifications amounts to the minimizing robust loss. And since we are going to use a summary loss function, uh, we are interested in whether the loss function is calibrated or not. It means we are, are going to see for the loss functions such that minimizing surrogate loss implies minimizing target loss. And there are two very important takeaways. There doesn't exist any convex calibrated surrogate losses. And the second is quasi concave loss functions would be important in this case. Because the minimizer of the conditional risk lies in the non robust areas for the convex losses, so there doesn't exist convex calibrated surrogate losses. And because we want to make the conditional risk is a mountainous shape like this one, so quasi concave loss functions will play an important role. The example is shift ramp loss, but there are also other examples. So this is the end of our code. Thank you for listening to our talk.